Lots of phone makers like to boast that their phone is the most competitive phone in its price range. And we often see best value for money banded about with very little care, but few phones actually deliver a performance that's way above their price point. In 2021, however, the Poco F3 did. Xiaomi's sub-brand delivered a phone that was as speedy and smooth as a flagship phone with a great vibrant display, fast charging, and a very affordable price. So how do you build on that? For 2022, the Poco F4 was released to do just that. But with it featuring exactly the same chipset as the F3 before it, can it really build on the success of the F3, or is it the same phone in a different chassis? I'm Cam Bunton from Pocketlint, and this is our review of the Poco F4. And while you're here, if you do like it, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. Now, one of our favorite things about the Poco F3 was the design. It wasn't especially flashy and it was quite slippery. It was also a bit of a fingerprint magnet, but it was very comfortable to hold. The curved edges meant it would sit nicely in the palm and alleviate some of the discomfort that comes with having a big phone. For the latest one, however, Poco jumped on the trend of releasing a squared off device with flat edges. In doing so, the company has taken away some of the appeal of the previous model, while also it just blends into the smartphone market rather than standing out. The camera unit on the back is neat enough though, with a square unit protruding from a rectangular base and placed in the top left corner of the phone. Both front and back are covered in glass, in fact pretty much everything about this phone's design could be described as pretty standard. That means the display takes up practically all of the front surface area with skinny frames up the sides and a tiny punch hole camera at the top and a slightly thicker bezel on the bottom edge. Despite having a plastic frame, it's got a solid feel to it, and the IP53 rating will ensure it should survive minor accidents with water. It is quite large though, and that does make it a bit of a pain when trying to reach elements near the top of the screen while using it one-handed. As far as buttons and ports go, it's got all the basics, really, but not everything. There's no headphone port, for example, and there's no micro SD card slot either. And whether or not you need one is another matter, given that it ships with 128 gigabytes of storage as standard. There is a physical fingerprint sensor built into the wake sleep button on the side and like its predecessor this works well. It's quick and responsive to unlock the phone and we've not had as many accidental or phantom touches with it as we'd experienced with the F4 GT or the much more expensive Xperia 1 4. As displays go, the Full HD AMOLED panel on the Poco F4 is very good, especially for a phone in this price range. Not only is it bright, reaching peaks of 1300 nits, but it also supports up to 120Hz refresh rates and even has support for HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision. In short, it's a very dynamic display. The thing that immediately stood out to us upon powering it on was how bright and vivid it was. Plus, with 395 pixels per inch, it's plenty crisp enough that you can't ever see individual pixels. In fact, with this combination of sharpness, brightness and contrast, it's comfortably one of the best displays in the mid-range market. Colours are lively and vibrant and the dark elements are very dark. Part of the beauty of the display lies in the settings though. Its default colour scheme is vivid, which sometimes has the tendency to push certain colours a little too far on the saturation front, like reds and oranges for instance. However, if you head into the colour scheme settings, you can tune the panel to your preference even to the point of adjusting contrast, gamma, and white balance. So if you want the colors to pop even more, choose saturated. Otherwise, you can choose the original color for a more muted and warm look, or choose either the P3 or sRGB in the advanced options for a different color gamut. And this is one of the many good sides of MIUI software, the Xiaomi skin that's loaded on top of Android for this phone. This software skin certainly has its quirks though, and is something we've noted in other Xiaomi, Redmi, and Poco reviews this year. It's nothing like the stock launcher that runs on Pixel and also introduces a number of unnecessary layers like the separating notification shade and quick setting control center. But moving on, and in addition to the great display, there are two speakers, one on either end of the phone. They combine to create quite a good stereo audio feel. Although as is often the case, the speaker in the top edge isn't quite as strong as the one in the bottom edge, and it's not as full either but it's a decent enough set of speakers and one that's certainly loud enough. But they're a little lacking in frequency range that would make them truly exceptional. Now onto performance and battery, and Poco's biggest dilemma here when launching the F4 was building a device that was better than the last. But when it comes to speed and fluidity and raw power, the company was a little stuck. If only because the last model used the Snapdragon 870 processor and there isn't really a successor in 2022. 
Without jumping up to the true flagship platforms like the 888 Plus or the 8 or 8 Plus Gen 1 and encroaching on the top tier market and probably making the phone more expensive, there wasn't a lot that Poco could do. Of course, dropping down to the 700 or 7 Gen series wasn't an option either because then technically that would be seen as making the phone worse. So the 870 it is, again. This unsurprisingly means the performance and speed of the phone is pretty much exactly what we got from its predecessor. Not that this is a bad thing, it's still a very quick and responsive device that'll load any game titles without much of a fuss. In fact, in a lot of the daily interaction, you'd be hard pressed to see much difference between this and a phone running the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 or Snapdragon 888. Crucially, it also means you've got more power at your disposal than if you were to buy a similarly priced device from a competitor like Samsung with its Galaxy A series. Plus, the Nothing Phone 1 has a lower tier processor too. Now, one phone that likely is comparable is the MediaTek Dimensity 1300 powered OnePlus Nord 2T, which has a similar approach to speed and fluidity but it is a tiny bit more pricey. Now this phone doesn't get overly warm under load like some devices can, and even after 15 to 20 minutes of constant gaming, we only felt it getting slightly warmer. And this tested during one of the warmest days of the year in the UK. If there's one thing on the spec sheet that you can point at and say objectively, this is better than the F3, it's the battery and the charging speeds. Not only has the capacity been upped from 4,250 milliamp hours to 4,500, but the charging speeds have also doubled. With its 67 watt wired charger, you can completely refill an empty battery in about 38 minutes. Like most fast charging tech, the bulk of that is done in the first 15 to 20. It's the kind of speed that allows you to charge it whenever you want, rather than plugging it in every night out of habit. Just plug it in when it's empty and pick it up again half an hour later and you'll have more than enough power to last the day. It does comfortably last a full day too, with two to three hours of screen time in a day going through our usual motions of doom scrolling on Twitter, chatting on Slack, reading the news, watching the old short video and doing a little gaming, we'd finish the day with anywhere between 35 and 40% left over. Not a two day battery, but still rather good. Now price wise, this is a mid-range phone. And that means a standard camera arrangement comprised of a good primary camera alongside a not so good ultra wide and a low resolution macro camera that's there mostly to make up the numbers. Specifically, the primary camera has a 64 megapixel sensor, the ultra wide has 16 and the macro has two megapixels. But as cameras go, it's more than capable of producing some good shots. It has no trouble producing sharp, colorful and good looking images outside in good daylight. Colors are a tiny bit vibrant, but they don't push too far into the realm of hyper real. It does, however, push the contrast and HDR effect quite hard. But then again, that's pretty much on trend for most smartphone manufacturers these days. What that means is you'll not get overblown highlights and even some darker areas in a scene with bright sky or bright backlighting will show color and detail. It does sometimes mean the very dark parts of the image are a bit too heavy and crushed, but it's not a bad look. Where the sensor struggles is when light levels start to drop. Even indoors in daytime away from bright light sources, we started to see some noise creep in, particularly in the shadows. The ultra wide struggles even more here to balance the light and the dark part of the images, leaving some brighter areas overexposed and lacking in detail, while darker areas are far too dark and shadowed, giving it quite a rough, flat image at times. Now in the end, or on the whole, the Poco F4 delivers the same experience as the Poco F3 before it, at least in terms of the features that really matter. With the Snapdragon 870 running the show and a big vibrant 120Hz display on the front, a lot of it feels very similar, to the point where it's hard to see any genuine reason for upgrading. What has changed is the design, but with its flat back and flatter edges, Poco has released a phone that's not as comfortable to hold as its predecessor. Be that as it may, if you're in the market for a phone under £400 and want a fast, smooth experience that feels as powerful as an £800 flagship, the F4 still represents very good value for money. If it was us though, we'd save a little more money and just get the Poco F3 instead. I've been Cam, I'm at Cam Bunton on social media, you can let me know what you think of this phone if you're going to get one or not, or you can use the comments down below. If you like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell and that way you won't miss any more of our uploads. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.